Now, I started off by saying that as the very many demonstrations we had, while we condemned Israel's brutality, we also celebrated Palestinian heroism and resistance. And we likened what is happening to Gaza to the brave young Jewish men and women in the Warsaw Ghetto against Nazi occupation. Under international law, <coughs> under international law, Palestinians under occupation have the right to resist. On the one hand, you have a colonial racist occupier armed with the most modern weapons of mass destruction, and on the other hand, the occupied and oppressed Palestinian victims facing ethnic cleansing and the most primitive means to defend themselves. There is absolutely no moral equivalency between the two protagonists. One is occupied, oppressed, invaded, terrorized and persecuted. The other is the occupier, oppressor, invader, terrorizer and prosecutor. As Bishop, Arch Archbishop Desmond Tutu noted, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side, in fact, of the oppressor. If an elephant has its foot on the tail of a mouse and you say that you are neutral, the mouse will not appreciate your neutrality. So the collective punishment, demolition, demo, uh, demolishing of homes, uprooting of olive plantations, the suffocating sieges, the mass starvations, assassinations and atrocities must end now. Until and unless organizations on the ground, trade unions, student organizations, push people to punish Israel by imposing sanctions. Sanctions. The anguish cries that have given us sleepless nights, the trauma experienced by an entire generation of young Palestinians in the Gaza and elsewhere, the anguish cries of the innocent will really be in vain. And I want to end with a document we circulated in 2001. At the time, of the World Conference Against Racism. I was there, I was one of the organizers. Today we hear by the apologists of Israel and Western governments that that World Conference was an anti-Semitic hate fest. And I tell you why they say this. Because you had tens of thousands of people, including a large number of Palestinians who made it there, not just from the occupied territories, but by the Palestinian diaspora, which today is probably about 7 million, who came there and who held hands with the Roma of Europe, the Dalits of India, the peasants of South America, the miners of Africa. And they shared their struggles. And collectively, they decided <coughs> to put the Palestinian struggle in the forefront of that festival of the oppressed. And I was present in Durban. Some of you might have been there. One of the organizers who linked up with many groups, including Jewish groups who were anti-Zionists, What we witnessed was nothing near this hate fest they talk about. The point is, it shocked them, it angered them, it scared them. So they had to, they had to erase that event. Of course, 9-11 helped them do that. But for all those thousands of people who came there, including Palestinians, that was the place where we started, in Durban, 2001, the second anti-apartheid movement, so that in 2005, the BDS campaign was born from Palestine. And we said, and I'm ending, <laughs> we South Africans who have lived through apartheid cannot be silent 
as another whole people are treated as non-human beings. People without rights or human dignity. And we cannot permit a ruthless state to use military jets, helicopter gunships. We cannot accept state assassination of activists, the torture of political prisoners, and collective punishment. We South Africans face apartheid and exploitation, bullets and prison, not with bouquets of flowers, but with resistance. And we are proud of this. Our history, this is the history of all oppressed people. Why should it be different for Palestinians? And we said that minimum justice, as in South Africa, requires dismantling the apartheid state of Israel so that a new democratic state can be formed, Jews and Arabs, Christians and Muslims have equal rights and opportunity and dignity. Thank you.